It used to be that if the government or anyone else wanted to spy on you and find out what you were thinking, they'd have to put in a bit of work. To really track everything, governments needed a real human spy to watch you. That meant that spying was a labor-intensive job. In heavily surveilled countries like East Germany, where the government wanted to keep an eye on everyone, two out of every 13 East Germans ended up being used by the Stasi as an informant. These days, it's a lot easier and takes fewer people to spy on one person, or spy on everyone for that matter. For that advance in mass surveillance, you can thank modern technology. You're probably still safe from surveillance if you're just writing or thinking or talking on your own in your own house. But the moment you use the internet to save, edit, or share something, things get a lot simpler for the 21st century spy. You might have heard that sending an email across the internet is like sending a postcard. Unlike a sealed envelope, your message might be seen by a few people on the way. In fact, the majority of traffic on the internet, emails, phone calls, photos, video, instant messages, is viewable by anyone who has access to the computers that your message passes through, from the computer in your home, to your local ISP, to the final destination of your message and all points between. And on the internet, there are a lot of points in between. Whenever you visit a website or save a document or send a message online, your data goes through at least a handful of computers and probably many more. These computers aren't owned by you or the final recipient of the message, but their operators or someone who hacks into them can look at and record everything about your message, including where it came from and where it's meant to be going. Some of these computers direct traffic for thousands or millions of people. So if you can put the digital equivalent of a spy camera in those computers, you could quickly collect the private thoughts of an entire population. There's a way, however, to make your communications private, even as they travel across the public internet, and that's by using strong encryption. Encrypted messages are turned into a form that is unreadable except to the person at their destination. Since the Ed Snowden revelations, more and more websites and internet companies have been using encryption to protect data in transit. But it's still not the default for many internet services. To increase your own use of encryption and to protect your data, you can use HTTPS Everywhere, a browser plugin from the Electronic Frontier Foundation that tells websites you visit to use encryption when they can. The more people use encryption, the more expensive it is to monitor everyone, which means that spies will have to go back to targeted, tailored surveillance instead of trying to be a cheaper version of East Germany Stasi spying on everyone. If you'd like to know more about using encryption and HTTPS everywhere, check out Surveillance Self-Defense from the Electronic Frontier Foundation.